Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sierra Sleep, Airway, and Wellness Center. And thank you for spending a few minutes with us today as we talk about breathing, sleep, and how important these two things are for our overall complete health and wellness. I don't know if you have been following much of the science or much of the discussion that's been going around about breathing right now, but there are tons of resources out there for you. We are here as a resource for you to help you answer questions, to get information, to screen, to test, and provide treatment for you. But there is a lot of resources out there from books to blogs to podcasts to even you know interviews on the news all about how breathing properly can improve our overall health and wellness. One of our favorite books that our team just finished reading is the book called Breath by James Nestor. This book is fascinating and it talks about the difference between nose breathing and mouth breathing, especially when it comes to growth and development and how we breathe and sleep and function as children, adults, and there's even animal studies in there. But what we do know now is we have a silent crisis in America with adults and children. Research has shown that nine out of 10 people in America suffer from one or more of these conditions that you'll see on the screen here. Everything from you know, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, MS, to cardiovascular disease, obesity, restless sleep, snoring, depression, anxiety, and the list goes on and on and on. And researchers now are wondering, you know, these visible symptoms that we have with attention and sleep, uh, bedwetting, frequent nighttime urination, crowding teeth, chronic fatigue, um, chronic allergies and sinus problems. Those are our visible symptoms. Could there be a really common denominator in the underlying cause, meaning a compromised airway? There are obstructions or problems with the breathing system that is leading to a whole host of medical problems. And could the root cause of a lot of these chronic diseases that are so prevalent in today's society now with adults and children actually come from growth and development and anatomy, just what's going on on the inside of our bodies? We're here to tell you that poor sleep, mouth breathing, snoring, grinding your teeth, it isn't healthy and it isn't normal. Things like insomnia, getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you know, having to have coffee or energy drinks to boost your energy every morning, you know, having problems with focus and concentration, uh, frequent headaches and TMJ pain and popping and clicking, grinding teeth, you know, or having to have a CPAP. You know, these things are huge red flags that our body might be struggling at night while we sleep. Right now, it's estimated that about one out of every five adults may have obstructive sleep apnea. So that might include many of you that are listening to this webinar today. In fact, the American Sleep Association estimates that about 80% of people who have obstructive sleep apnea don't know that they have it. They are undiagnosed. So when we talk about obstructive sleep apnea, breathing and sleep, we're talking really about the functional airway, how we breathe. It starts in our nose. It's our nasal passages. It's the septum, the nose, the sinuses. Then we go back into the nasopharynx where we talk about tonsils and adenoids. The mouth plays a huge role in our breathing, the size and shape of our upper jaw and our lower jaw and our tongue tongue and our tongue space, how our tongue functions down all the way to the bottom of the throat. So when we look at obstructive sleep apnea, this is where about 80% of people have it and they don't know or they are undiagnosed, there is actually a blockage or a collapse in the airway. So we ideally want air to go through our nose, down our passageways to get to our body to feed our lungs and our heart and our brain. So with normal breathing, the airways are open, the nasal passages are clear, there's room for the air to flow in the back of our throat. But with obstructive sleep apnea, the airway collapses and we have blocked airflow to the body. So you might be wondering, like, what does your airway look like? You know, we want the air functional airway to be as big and broad and open as possible. We want it to be like a really nice, big, fat, wide garden hose. So air can get to your heart and to your brain and to your lungs and to all the vital parts of our body. But for some people who have obstructive sleep apnea, the airway is a really skinny, narrow straw. Maybe even that straw has little kinks in it. So your airway, your dental arches, your nose, the shape of your tongue, the size of your tongue, how your teeth fit together, these are really all important parts of what your airway 
looks like. A healthy airway should be nice and big, um, small airways, obstructive uh, sleep apnea airways, people who breathe through their mouth typically have a much, much, much smaller functional airway. It's estimated that about 70 million Americans suffer from some sort of a sleep problem, and nearly about 60% of Americans have some sort of chronic sleep disorder. The CDC has even called this sleep dis this, the prevalence of sleep disorders a public health epidemic. We know that the consequences of untreated sleep, obstructive sleep apnea are severe, severe high risk of having a stroke, having high blood pressure that's not treatable with medication, even things like sudden death, car accidents, um, mood disturbances, daytime sleepiness, hormone imbalances, diabetes, obesity, acid reflux or gastroesophageal reflux disease, sexual dysfunction. In fact, about you know 80% of men who have sexual dysfunction may have some sort of obstructive sleep apnea. And the list goes on and on and on. In fact, there are even really more severe, significant health consequences that we want to touch on today. If you have untreated sleep apnea, you're two and a half times more likely to develop cancer. You're about four times more likely to have a stroke and about four times more likely to die of a premature death. We know that sleep-related breathing disorders, common physical findings are the size and shape of the tongue, um, obesity, high BMI, enlarged tonsils, or uvula, elongated soft palate, small jaws, and different types of nasal polyps and problems with the sinuses and the septum. But, you know, red flags that you guys can kind of look for either with you or your family members is changes in mood, personality changes, depression, anxiety, irritability, snoring, believe it or not, is not normal, especially if it's more than once or twice a week. And loud snoring could even potentially be even more of a concern than just like light breathing, um, so morning headaches, you know, uh, clumsy, being accident prone, decreased sex drive, nighttime sweating, poor memory, con confusion and fatigue are common signs and symptoms. And there are some pretty sad statistics out there. The World Health Organization now says that sleep deprivation, sleep problems, sleep disorders is a significant global crisis. The United States, we spend more on sleep disorders in the United States than we do even on our military. The Guinness Book of World Records states that sleep deprivation is now more dangerous than the highest recorded skydiving event and that breathing disorders may have very serious complications. And you can't just look at somebody and tell if they have sleep apnea or sleep disordered breathing, but a trained professional can pick up on a lot of clues and provide, you know, some help. So, you know, do you recognize any of these symptoms with you or your loved ones, your spouse, your parents, your children, your family members, blocked stuffy nose, chronic allergies, open mouth breathing during the day or night, waking up one or more times per night, going up to go to the bathroom or bedwetting, grinding the teeth, seeing receding gums or excessive wear on the teeth, snoring more than once or twice a week, you know, co-diagnosis with other diseases, new diagnosis of obesity, diabetes, gum disease, untreated tooth decay, heart disease, memory loss, mental changes, um, or just chronic fatigue or chronic pain. According to the Foundation for Airway Health, these are the medical signs and symptoms of poor airway health that you may have a breathing or sleep dis disorder, acid reflux, asthma, allergies, uh, carbohydrate cravings, dark, um, puffy, or discoloration underneath the eyes, digestive issues, frequent infections, headaches, chronic head or neck pain, low iron levels, poor head or body posture, that forward head body posture, or large tonsils or adenoids, or a history of having to have the tonsils or adenoids removed. Dental signs and symptoms of poor or health could be, you know, recurring cavities, gum disease, sore bleeding gums, bad breath, the need for braces, the need to have teeth extracted because there's no space, fissuring or scalloping on the sides of the tongue, um, or things like tongue tie. Sleep signs and symptoms of poor airway health include bedwetting or getting up at night to use the restroom more than once, loud breathing or snoring or gasping for air or pauses in breathing, regular arousals or sleep disturbances, restless sleep or leg cramps at night, sleep walking or talking or trouble falling or staying asleep. Mental signs and symptoms of poor airway health include anxiety, depression, ADD and ADHD, learning problems and impairments, memory loss and daytime fatigue.
And one classic thing that we know is highly, highly linked to obstructive sleep apnea is the size and shape of the mouth and looking at the tongue. You know, when a tongue is fully um, strong and developed and can move around, it actually causes the arches and the teeth to be nice and wide and broad. A tongue that's restricted and doesn't move properly interferes with growth and development, so dental arches will be smaller. And they won't have a nice big broad U shape, but they'll be more of like a V shaped or a wavy shape. So looking at the, how the tongue moves around, looking at the size and shape of the teeth and looking at the sides of the tongue can tell us a lot about whether or not that tongue is playing a really helpful role in our health or actually getting in the way of breathing because there's no space for it in the mouth. So looking at the size and the shape of the teeth and the dental arches and the movement of the tongue is really, really critical to tell us what's going on inside when it comes to breathing. And just looking at the size and the shape of the upper jaw is really important as well. That's what holds the upper teeth in, but it also what houses the nose, the septum and the sinuses. We need a nice broad face to house all these really important body parts that play a critical role with breathing. So, you know, when this, when this parts and then top jaw are small, the nasal passages are small, it's very hard to breathe through the nose. And then a lot of people will end up breathing through the mouth. Breathing through the nose is the optimal way to get air to our body. When we breathe through our nose, it warms the air by about 20%. It filters out bacteria and viruses and toxins. And it you know, humidifies and creates a lot of moisture. It thins secretions, it increases nitric oxide, all of the things that are critical for air to get to the rest of our body. When we breathe through our mouth, we don't have the benefit of any of those things. When we breathe through our mouth, we have very cold, dry and unfiltered air feeding our body. And we do know that this compromised nasal airway, when people can't breathe through their nose really well, that it changes the position of the tongue and mouth breathing has been highly linked to causing the tonsils and adenoids to swell. Now, traditionally, the you know, main treatment option for these sleep problems, sleep apnea, has been a CPAP machine, which absolutely saves lives, right? This is a machine that's hooked up on your face to, to a machine next to the bed and it feeds your body oxygen all night long while you sleep. However, the CPAP has never really addressed the root cause and done any exploration as far as what's actually causing the problem. It just really gets your body great oxygen. So what we're really encouraging people to do now is look at the root cause. If you are having problems breathing, if you're having any sleep issues, if you're having sleep apnea, if you stop breathing at night, if you're noticing some of these medical, mental, physical, or dental concerns, you know, we encourage you to determine what is the root cause to protect your health and help you and your family. You know, we want to know what does your airway look like? Common root causes are tongue ties, small airways, small dental arches, enlarged tonsils and adenoids, deviated septum, small nas nasal passages, no room for the tongue, a high malapati score. So we want to know what is causing your issue specifically because we're all different. Once you know the source of your airway problem, then you can make a plan and create a path to better health. So we are here to help and our office provides comprehensive airway assessments. It's a very fast appointment. It's not painful. Um, and we are here to provide at-home sleep tests where you wear a ring for, uh, on your finger for two nights while you sleep in the comfort of your own home. Then you come into the office and we take an image called a CBCT. It's like a CAT scan of your airway. So we can measure out and map out your airway. We can look at your tonsils and your adenoids and the size and shape of your mouth and look at your tongue and really determine the root cause of your issues. We'll take some photographs and then use a computer wand to scan your teeth and complete an exam. We provide a pretty extensive airway report for you and your medical providers after this appointment. This is an example of what the common sleep test looks like. We're able to evaluate sleep quality, sleep opportunity, sleep apnea, sleep pathology. We're able to look at what percentage of your sleep is stable sleep, which is critical for rest and repair and healing of our body at night while we sleep. We're able to look at your longest apnea episode, the variations in your heart rate, and most importantly, look at your blood oxygen saturation level throughout the night. So if you do decide that you want to determine the root cause of your airway or sleep or breathing issues, and you want to fix it, you know, treatment can usually be completed within about a year. 
But with a lot of the treatment modalities that we recommend, improvement can be sometimes noticed even within days, weeks, or months. And you can stop the struggle. You can feel more energized and treat the root cause of breathing obstructions. So like I said, we provide an airway report and a customized treatment plan. So you might be wondering, well, what's all in this treatment plan? It could be a whole host of different things, right? It could be dental appliances. It could be... Uh, different types of co-therapy and referrals. Some of our dental appliances are actually FDA cleared to treat sleep apnea. Some of them are FDA cleared to just manage sleep apnea. Some of them are designed to promote training and growth and they can be customized based on your individual findings. One thing that we are extremely proud to offer in our office is the Vivos Oral Appliance Therapy System, which was FDA cleared in recent years to actually treat sleep apnea by using your body's own stem cells and the ability to grow and expand. This is a revolutionary new system that has been able to get many people off of a CPAP or give them some amazing breathing support if they cannot wear a CPAP, if they're in C, you know, CPAP intolerant, or to prevent people from needing a CPAP. This is an example of just how big we are able to grow and expand the airway after wearing a dental appliance for about 12 to 18 months. On the left side, you can see how small it is. And on the right side, you can see after 15 months of active treatment, how much bigger and broader we're able to grow the airway. But our approach actually is more than just dental appliances. You know, you will be provided with a complete health and wellness approach to healthy breathing and sleep. And some of the treatment modalities that we might be talking about include things like mouth taping or referral for an oral facial myofunctional therapist or nasal sprays or nasal dilators or breathe right strips. You will have support with you the whole entire time with a dedicated airway team, including an airway success concierge which is a touch point for you to have support from the very start from sleep testing all the way through treatment. I talk a lot about, you know, how we work with co-therapy, provide co-therapy with other, you know, healthcare professionals. This is a journey that we know might take a whole interdisciplinary team approach. So we also refer to physical therapists or cranial sacral therapists or chiropractors, ENTs, primary care or functional medicine providers or health coaches, and then breathing specialists, which might include myofunctional therapy and orthodontics. So you can see that we can offer a lot for you for education, for resources, for support, for testing, for treatment and referrals. So if you're interested in looking at what your airway looks like, the next step would be to call our office at 775-977-0822 for an appointment. We're located on Kitsky Lane in South Reno. We are the Sierra Sleep Airway and Wellness Center, and we're here to help you. Please let us know what kind of role we can play in helping you with your overall health and wellness.